And welcome back to Square Off. The stakes are high in this year's primary election with the three top statewide offices all open, but we can forgive voters who might be a little confused when they get their ballot in the mail in just 10 days. Joining us now is Paul Bentz, Senior Vice President at High Ground Consulting here in Phoenix and our data guy, our digit guy. He knows all, all the numbers. Paul, welcome back. Thanks for having me. Let's walk th folks through the primaries, and I mentioned voters might be confused when they get their ballots because we just went through once in every 10 year redistricting, right. and people might be in new districts and not realize it, and might be represented by new representatives, members of Congress, legislators, and not realize it yet. So can you give us an idea, roughly, of what areas of the valley might be most affected by this and might have different names on their ballots? Sure. We just went through redistricting and they redrew all of the maps. And so uh, on your new voter registration card that you should have received in the mail, it'll tell you the districts you live in. But especially if you're in the Southwest Valley or in portions of the East Valley, because of that rapid growth, many of the district lines have moved. Um, for example, in the Southwest Valley, you often would have been represented by Debbie Lesko. You're now in the new Congressional District 9, which is a west Western Arizona district that goes all the way out to the Colorado River. If you're in the East Valley, many years, uh, sort of in the Central East Valley, it's likely that you've been represented by Greg Stanton, but now you are probably in Congressional District 5, which is Andy Biggs' district. So that's a head snapper for some voters, some Democratic voters who suddenly, suddenly realize they're represented by Biggs. Let's go back to the Southwest Valley. That's interesting because Paul Gosar now has a new tranche of Republican voters who've never cast a ballot for him. Could that be a problem for him in the primary, a very crowded primary? Congressional District 9 is the most Republican district in the state, and he does have Trump's endorsement, which should help him with that audience. But it is true. I don't know if any portion or very little of that district was something that he has represented in the past. So he will be a new name. It'll take him a little while to um, improve his presence in that general area. But a crowded primary should actually help him because he'll be the most well-known name out of everybody in that race. Uh, I've made the case that the primaries matter. You Very make a so. case that in some cases they do and they don't. Right. But ma make that argument. What, why do they matter versus the general election uh, coming up in November? August 2nd is an incredibly important date. That's the primary election. A large portion of our races are determined in the primary. In fact, 25 out of 30 legislative districts are considered safe. There's 13 safe Republican districts, which means they have a significant participation advantage, and there's 12 safe Democratic districts. So what we're talking about here is a lot of these races are determined um, in August, and by the time that November rolls around, most of the decisions have been made. So if there, uh, there really aren't competitive races, and if you have a large field, you get to choose who the winner might be, whether it's the Republican or the Democrat, they'll go on to victory. Sure. I mean, like, in, in, in November. fact, there's... There's nine Senate races for state Senate right now that are even uncontested. That means about a third of our state Senate's already decided. And then many other of these districts, they'll be decided in the primary. Democrats maybe haven't fielded a Republican in, or fielded in a Republican district and vice versa. Um, so what we're really talking about is the balance of the legislature will be determined in November. There's four highly competitive districts and one somewhat competitive district that'll make up the balance. But ultimately, barring a few rare exceptions, these safe districts are really determined in the primary. So is that the result of gerrymandering? How, how do we get those kinds of maps? Well, I mean, it comes down to that the the Independent Redistricting Commission covers a lot of different things, compactness, competitiveness, um, as well as understanding communities of interest, and as well as uh, some of the considerations with the Voting Rights Act that we have to deal with and making sure that we have majority minority districts to increase, increase people of color representation. And so what ends up happening in the, in the end of this is you, these folks try to balance all of this and create what they believe to be an even playing field. I'd say in this round of redistricting, the congressional maps tend to benefit the Republicans. And in the next 10 years, these legislative maps will probably skew more towards benefiting the Democrats. Interesting. Uh, there is a phenomenon we pinpointed in the last cycle, maybe two cycles ago, the Purple Loop. Right. Following the Loop 101 yes. around Phoenix and a lot of purple districts where voters cast ballots for, say, Doug Ducey and Kirsten Cinema, or Mark Kelly and Donald Trump. Right. 
Uh, is that still in place with these redrawn maps? Yeah, so what we see is the general areas that are uh, those ones that are dis the discerning voters that kind of pick and choose, swing back and forth, is the same general areas. Um, they just, they have new district numbers. They're districts two and four, which is Scottsdale and sort of the Paradise Valley area, District 9, which is the Tempe West Mesa area, and then District 13, which is the Gilbert area, that's definitely changing. High wage, high income earning, high education attainment makes these discerning voters. Okay, and races to watch. Give us a couple. Sure. I know there's one here in Central Phoenix that has is a Democratic brawl, which you rarely see. That, that one is, they uh, due to redistricting, a significant number, I believe it's LD3, um, a significant number of legislators, like four elected, five, 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 five yeah. Um, are all competing for two spots. So that is definitely, that's the uh, brawl as you mentioned it. I think LD10, which aforementioned Rusty Bowers, talked about the speaker who just went down um, and testified before the commission. He's being challenged by David Farnsworth, a former legislator. I think that's a race to watch. I call that the battle for the, the soul of the caucus and where the Republican caucus will go. It's expected that Republicans will maintain um, the Senate majority in the state legislature, so that will be a big race to watch. Um, supervisor race, uh, Thomas Galvin was appointed by the Board of Supervisors. He has been a firm and stringent defender of the election. He's being uh, you know, challenged by a slew of election deniers, so I think that will be a very interesting watch race to watch. All right, Paul Bentz, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. When we come back, Drag queen Barbara Seville called out the hypocrisy of now former friend Carrie Lake. The entertainer who performs as Barbara Seville tells us why he did it. But first, is Republican candidate for Governor Matt Salmon facing pressure to get out of the race? And what does Democrat Katie Hobbs think about Doug Ducey's performance? We'll hear from them next. <laughs> 